wine dude here. Welcome. I'm here with winemaker Aaron Walker from Pally Wine Company. Dude, what a place to work. Right? Oh my God. Where are we? We're out at our Pally Estate Vineyard, which is located in Santa Rita Hills. So we're in Santa Barbara County, western edge of the Santa Ynez Valley. Nice, nice. So you do all the winemaking over that Pally, correct? That's right, yeah. And for Tower 15. And Tower 15, thank you. Yes. Nice. Yes. Nice. So how exactly did you get into this? Uh, I started out with uh, just a passion and love for wine, working in restaurants. I uh, worked waited tables in fine dining restaurants while in college in San Diego. Um, studied at San Diego State to become a teacher. Decided I had no interest in being a teacher after waiting tables for a few years and unfortunately making probably better money than what teachers make, but um, that's what sparked the interest in wine. I uh, worked, uh, worked a harvest here in 2006 uh, as an intern, making peanuts, but doing it for the experience, and one thing led to another, and I've been with Pally for the last 12 years now. Wait, wait, you're making peanuts? <laughs> I was, now I'm making Pinot. Oh, <laughs> nice, that was From here? peanuts to Pinot, Pinot Noir, yes. So, Sweet. Pally Estate Vineyard Pinot Noir, right off this property right here. Mmm. She made this wine. I made this one. Good job. Thank you so much. This and many others. So where exactly do we make the wine out here? So we don't. Oh. We don't make the wine here. The wine is grown here as grapes. Once the grapes are harvested, then we bring them to our winery, which is about 15 minutes west of here in the city of Lumpa. And that's where all the wines are made for Pali and Tarvati. Oh. You want to go check it out? Okay, let's do it. Yeah, all right. We should. So let's go there. I can show you around the winery and we can taste some of the wines there and show you a little bit more about how. All right, I'm going to finish this first. I think you should. Bottoms up. <laughs> well, we're here. Pally Wine Company. This is our production facility where all the wine is actually made, produced, everything once it's harvested, once we bring the grapes in off the vineyard, then it all comes here. All the wines are fermented here, aged here, and bottled right here at this 10,000 square foot building in Lompoc. Wow. That's cool. That was the official description. Right. <laughs> uh, for me personally, it's a place to drink, as you can see. So I am going to uh, sit here and view these beautiful wines. And now I have wine in my glass. So, uh, just like that. Just like that. This place is like magic. I know, isn't it? <laughs> this is where all the magic happens, is all what right. I have to say. So cheers. This is a brand new wine for us. We just just bottled it last month, and it's a new wine for us all together. It's uh, Rosé of Pinot Noir that we're going to start selling out uh, even a little bit in distribution. But it's a very dry style Rosé Pinot Noir, 2018. So very young, fresh. Yeah, very floral. I like it. Right, exactly. Yeah, so it's... Uh, all right, let's give it a try. Mmm, that's perfect. Really good. Yeah, summertime, warm weather, easy drinking, about 20 bucks a bottle. Um, so it's one of our entry level, you know, value priced. Um, only 600 cases made, so not a big production wine. And it's pink. And it's pink? How come? Well, How did it it's get rose. Pink? Oh, it's the skins of the grapes <laughs> that make it pink, but only a limited skin contact. So we crush the grapes up and just let them sit for a couple hours to extract some color from the skins. And then, um, and then we separate the skins from the juice and ferment that pink juice into a rosé. Okay, so you don't put the grape skins in later, you put them in just right right off the bat. Right, so we actually, we'll harvest the grapes and then throw them all into our press, which is the machine that squeezes the grapes and separates the juice from the solids. And uh, So we'll throw them in the press, press them, squeeze them a little bit to release the juice, let that sit for an hour or two. That's where the color starts extracting. Gotcha. You know, if, if, you, if you just squeeze the grapes, and let the juice run free, the juice comes out clear. You actually get white wine out of red grapes if you don't let the skin stay in contact. And so exactly. that's how we're making our rosé is, you know, that limited skin contact. So. Nice, nice. Thanks. And it works too. It does, yeah. So. It's good. It's, All right, cool. Yeah, nice, fun, easy drinking rosé of Pinot Noir. So we purchased most of these grapes from a vineyard up in Paso Robles. Um, and then we have a vineyard of our own, which we got a chance to see already today, and that's where uh, a lot of our Pinot Noir and Chardonnays are coming from um, for the things like Huntington, which actually, oops, you want to try a little bit of our Chardonnay here first? Sure. So this is grown at our vineyard. This is an estate Chardonnay, so the Santa Rita Hills property. Um, we've only got about six acres of Chardonnay planted. The rest of it out there is Pinot Noir. 
Um, so we're not focusing heavily on Chardonnay, but we do bottle a couple hundred cases a year. And this is from your own vineyard? Right, so this is an estate bottled, estate grown Chardonnay from our Pali estate vineyard. Yeah. Um, the Chardonnay's barrel fermented using about 50% new French oak, so it's got a little toastiness to it, um, but it's not not super buttery. We, we really like high acid and mineral driven Chardonnays and not the big, rich, buttery, oaky style. So, so the oak is in there just to add a little bit of toastiness, but without overdoing it on that. Yeah, you don't smell a lot of oak in there. Right, and that's the point. What most people think of as that Good. typical California Chardonnay, which is real rich and buttery and oaky, that's not the style we're going for with our Chardonnays. We like more, like I said, acid and mineral focused. So how long in the barrel? So a year and a half, 18 months. So this is a 2016 that we're tasting. We'll be bottling the 2017s um, next month. Okay. So, yeah, so they get a full 18, sometimes up to 20 months in barrel. Okay. And how long do they sit in the bottle? Um, usually about four to six months before we release these before wines. These are, you know, single vineyard wines um, get that longer aging time. And then we have a line of Chardonnays, uh, well, one Chardonnay and some Pinot Noirs that shorter barrel aging time, and they also retail for about half the price, too. So I like the finish. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that Santa Rita Hills, you know, Great. that acid that just really focused acid and mineral finish. A little salinity, you get a little bit of that salty ocean air flavor in there. But it lasts a while. Right. Which is know, great. That's, yeah, that's yeah. what you want, you know, that concentration of flavors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, you know, we don't get huge crops out of these vineyards here. And what we do get are very concentrated flavors and really, you know, n nice long finishes, big mouthfeel. Will the recent rain help that at all? It can't, you? it can't hurt. You know, it's, it's got to help for sure. The, the rain a few years for that. All that rain helps really flush the soils out and, and makes the vines happier. And, um, so yeah, we're off to a great start this year with the growing season because of all the rains, the, um, the vines actually stayed dormant longer than, than they have in recent years, which is a good thing. So we saw bud break occur a little bit later, um, than we have in recent years. And, uh, that, that's good. That's a good thing. We want the vines to stay dormant and, and happy and the stage we're at at this time of the year now. Right, is, right. You know, we've, we're beyond bud break now. We've got, you know, strong shoot growth as we saw at the vineyard. This is, um, Huntington is one of our most popular, one of our best selling wines that we produce. Um, Pally Wine Company is really focused only on Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. And Huntington is our Santa Barbara County Pinot Noir that will produce about 8,000 cases annually. And so this makes it out into distribution. Um, as I mentioned to you earlier, we have um, Costco, um, not, not all the stores, but um, you can find this one wine in Costco at a lot of the stores in California and then even um, outside of California these days too. You hear that, folks? You get this stuff, a Huntington, is it Pinot? Yeah, it's Pinot. Huntington Pino 2017 Pinot in Costco. There and you go. This is... Uh, one of two wines that has made it onto Wine Spectator's Top 100 Wines of the Year. Um, so this was on that list a couple years ago, and that only helped propel the sale, sales of these wines. Sure so, that. Yeah, that was a huge feather in our cap. <laughs> so we were very proud of that. Uh, but great value. I mean, for a $25 Pinot, it, it over delivers. It's just it's tons of flavor. And a lot of these, uh, most of the grapes that go into this wine are coming off our property, the same, same property we were at. And in terms of barrel aging, like I mentioned earlier, this is only going to be about 10 months in the barrel, and then it gets bottled um, usually right before the next harvest starts. That's really good. It's not a strong Pinot flavor. You know, some of them get a lot stronger than others. Sure. Yeah, yeah. This is nice. Thanks. It's good drinking wine. And that's what it's meant for. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's supposed to be easy drinking, fruit forward, um, and like you're saying, it's not that what some Pinot Noirs can be a little more earthy and a little bit rougher. And so this is a good Pinot Noir for people that aren't into the real funky Pinot Noirs, the ones that want, you know, more of the fruity. Go good with a pork chop. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, I think so. Anything on the barbecue, too, you know, I, I like it with, um, yeah, roasted meats, you know, pork chop, pork loin, duck, lamb, those types of right. dishes. Yeah, yeah. Yum. <laughs> oh, what else? Oh, and then here's one of our big boys. So we do um, a few different single vineyard Pinots each year, and these are done in much smaller quantities. This is only about 200 cases. This particular one comes from our estate vineyard, again, the same property. Uh, this is our 2016 estate Pinot Noir. So this is a blend of four different clones all grown at our property there. And we go through and barrel select out of all these many barrels that we have. Um, we'll go through and pick out our, you know, the best blend that we can come up with to create the, the estate bottling, which will retail for, you know, that's one of our more high dollar wines at $69 a bottle. And then, okay. um, the, the barrels that don't make the cut into this bottling will get what we call declassified. And the, those will end up in something like this in Huntington. And so that's what makes this such a great value, too. Right. 
Like you're getting some of these the higher end grapes and the lower end wine, right? You know, yeah, you know, yeah, lower end, but not you know, no, exactly, but mid grade, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all high grade. It's just of that's, course that's what I meant. <laughs> we can't sell all, sell all of it at seventy dollars a bottle, unfortunately. So, right? Yeah, so we have to have diversity, and you know the entry level pricing helps for sure. But but of course, you know, price does not always drive you know the quality of the wine. So keep that in mind, you guys. No, that's exactly it. And we've always been focused on over-delivering for the price with our wines, even in our early days going back to 2005. That was, that's always been a big goal of ours, coming from the top, from the owner who I you know, work directly for. And, uh, right. He's always wanted to, uh, to over-deliver, and, and to, especially with these wines that are more value-priced. Uh, when people tasting, wow, you know, that, that's what we want to see. And it, and it's, exactly. And, and I've tried to explain to people that, you know, um, the price does not always drive the quality of the wine, you know. I mean, you might be buying, you know, an older bottle. It's still good, but it's much less money. It doesn't make it any less valuable, you know. Right. It doesn't exactly. taste any different. Well, of course, wines change during, right. you know, different periods of time, but, you know, so anyway. So this is even another step up, you know, as far as intensity of fruit and, and concentration of flavors. Um, mm -hmm. And there's more new oak used in the making of these wines. Um, but right. you can definitely tell a difference, you know, from one to the next, or at least I hope you can. I can. Um, but just richer mouthfeel and, you know, longer finish. Well, the Huntington is much, is a lighter, a lighter right. wine compared, this is more full-bodied, so it, it's, you know, seven bucks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's a difference of, you know, the crop load too, and so, you, you know, in the blocks where we where we source these grapes from, we're getting maybe two tons to the acre, and then we have other blocks in the vineyard where we're getting up to four, or maybe even five tons to the acre. And so when you when your crops heavier, you're gonna the wine's not gonna be quite as concentrated. And right, right but, but to make the price work, we have to crop it at a higher level. Yeah, to get and, it in a bottle at twenty. And it seems a little jammier. Right. Yeah, yeah, it is. We're big fans and supporters of this area, and that's obviously why we planted our fifty acres out in the Santa Rita Hills, um, but it's always got great fruit and um, a really nice spice, which is what it's showing through too. So it's like cooking spices, baking spices, um, even like black tea, um, Asian spices, you know, it's, it's all about the spices. Um, it's all about the spices. So here, let's use this one. <laughs> this is do not touch wine. Oh, oh. excuse me. <laughs> I just use it for a club to beat people. Let's try and <laughs> Um, Remember that you're on camera, okay? Right. <laughs> it's that evidence thing, right? Yeah, so. Uh, so we are focused on Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, as I said, but um, we like to drink things other than Pinot and Chard, so that's why we've got our other line of, of our other brand, Tower 15 Wines, which was um, started in about 2010, um, producing wines from vineyards all up and down the central coast, so Paso Robles down to this area, Santa Barbara County. Um, focusing more on the warmer climate varieties such as you know, Syrah, Cabernet, Merlot, things like that. But we do a lot of rosés, a lot of different white wines. Um, Rhone, we do a blend, a white Rhone blend. We do a red Rhone blend, a red Bordeaux blend. Play around with a lot of different things. We do Riesling, Chenin Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio, all under the Tower 15 label. And it's, it's much smaller production wines as a whole and um, a little more, more eclectic too. It gives us gives me a chance to play around with different blends. And right, so it's not just Pinot and Chardonnay. You, right. This is your sister label, uh, Tower 15, and you're able to try different types of varietals and different kinds of blending and so forth. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and the owner gives me a lot of freedom end. to play around with those blends and to source right. different grapes each year. And hit another market. Yep. yep. Yeah. And then a lot of these wines are what go into our Wine on Tap program at our tasting rooms, where we have eight wines on tap at all of our locations. Ah, Wine on Tap. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Tell us a little We've bit more about that these fun bottles that we sell is it's very you know um, very similar to what breweries do where you've got uh, multiple taps and the the for us the wines rather than beers on tap rotate and change so it's not static we're not selling the same wine all the time we sell the refillable bottles which our customers especially you know our, our regular customers that live local to our tasting rooms they uh, they are big fans of this program and um, it's a great value too you know the, the wine that you get and what we're putting on tap is different than what we offer in bottles so we for the most part, they're all unique blends um, that you won't find in our bottled wines. And, uh, but because they're blends, a lot of them are being pulled from these wines of the Tower 15 line of wines. And that's 
where we're creating, I'm creating those those wines on tap. So wait a second, you mean you're taking the beer drinker's approach to wine? <laughs> I am a beer on drinker. Tap? So. <laughs> you are a beer drinker. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, they say it takes a lot of beer to make good wine. You right? know what? I've heard that many <laughs> I times. thought maybe you had. Yeah. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I might have a keg or two somewhere around <laughs> here of beer, but... <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about beer right now. <laughs> but yes, going back to the, yeah, it, it was very much a beer drinker's approach to when we opened the tasting rooms was that we wanted to have that that you know fun atmosphere and take a lot of the seriousness out of the wine drinking without taking the seriousness out of the wine itself. And you know it was uh, and having wine on tap was was not an original idea. We did steal it from a couple other. There's two other producers in the area that were doing it before us. Um, so we're not, you know, the, the, only, the first ones to do it, but we, we know a good idea when we see one. So we, Absolutely. we took Absolutely. it and ran with it, and it's, it's taken off. We're, our, the amount of wine that we sell in kegs just keeps increasing month to month and year to year um, as those programs catch on more and more with our customers. So do you actually put it in kegs, or are there barrels mm-hmm. back there? Right, no, we, we put it into five-gallon kegs, so okay. similar to what the, the breweries use, those, right. you know, those, micro-brew, uh, you know, those micro kegs, those five gallons. And... Um, uh, no, we fill it all right here, and um, a lot of times, most of the wines get filled directly out of a barrel. We'll just stick a hose in the barrel and fill it right into the kegs, and, um, uh, and so it all, yeah, it all gets filled by hand here. And those those blends are one or two barrel blends most of the time, and so they're, you know, once they're gone, they're gone. So we keep rotating, like I was saying, those those blends or the wines that we put on tap. It, you know, we'll only have one barrel, only give us ten kegs, and we have five tasting rooms to supply. So the wine goes fast, and once it's gone, it's gone. And, Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. It depends on which side of the, the bar you're on it. Yeah, so folks, you go to the Funk Zone, you go into Pally Wine Company's wine tasting room, and you grab one of these bottles. What does it cost to fill? Um, you buy the bottle filled for about $25, okay. and then you bring it back to refill it. It's, um, I believe, 19 or $20 each in time. that bottle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you refill your own wine right out of the tap, right there in the Funk Zone. Well, they can't touch the taps. We'll fill it for them. Oh, really? Not fill it yourself, kind of. Deal. I can't just go up and grab my own. <laughs> well, maybe for you. Uh oh. <laughs> you know what we could use? We could use a flex tube. <laughs> right? I think we should. <laughs> We're gonna have to try that out. I could just so. sit in the corner. I don't know. I don't have to bother anybody. <laughs> just hook it up. You need a camelback, maybe. Yeah. Right. Filled with wine, that kind of thing. Okay, so this is... Um, so moving into the Tower 15 line, this is called Sunset, and it's our um, Rhone Rosé. It's a uh, blend of uh, Grenache and Morvedre with a little touch of Syrah. Okay. Uh, but made in the same way that we made the Rosé of Pinot Noir with that limited skin contact. So it's like a GSM light? It is, yeah, yeah. yeah right? Yeah, GSM Cheers. pink, yeah. And this stuff you can get in the tap? Um, this we do, we do have this on tap okay. in limited quantities, but we bottled a couple hundred cases of it as well. Okay. So Yeah, so this... This is one of the few wines that we actually serve both ways, but on tap it's very limited. We only reserve about 100 gallons when we and we bottle the rest. But, yeah, okay. So, uh, but I do know, you know, like right now at the moment they are serving one of these two wines at our tasting room, but it won't be there indefinitely for that long. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Mm, it's really good, nice and light. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So very dry, light, nice bright acid acidity. Oh, I grabbed an old bottle. Okay, this is cool. Anyways, so, <laughs> <laughs> this is not a current release. I just realized it's 2013, but um, the Jetty is one of our more popular um, blends under the Tower 15 label, um, and this is our Rhone blend, um, same as the Rosé, but a little different blend of grapes. It's Syrah, Grenache, and uh, in 2013, just Mervedra. So um, we've been using... In the, more recent years, since so and Carignan in the blend as well. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, this I was back that. before we started getting those grapes. So, mm-hmm. so this is a true GSM. 2000, like I said, this is a 13, not a current release. So we're That's dipping okay. into the library a little bit. So cheers. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> and for, for this label, this project, Tower 15, we, we source grapes from... Not just locally, San Inez, but also up in Paso Robles, and then we'll blend together. So this is a blend of a couple different vineyards um, of those three different grapes. I like this one. I really yeah, do. Yeah, thank you. That's that, a very popular wine. For, it is. It's for And, ours. you know, I hate to say this because I've told people you can't say this, but it's very grapey. <laughs> <laughs> I taste the actual grape in this one. How dare you say it tastes <laughs> like grapes? <laughs> it's made from grapes, but you can't say that. <laughs> I like it. It's good. Well, good. Thank you. Yeah, I do too. I'm a big fan of Rhone wines in general. Mm-hmm. 
It's a very round flavor, you know? Yeah. That's what I like about it. Yeah, and the benefit of a few years of bottle aging, too, probably helps. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, but thank you. Yeah, and then um, just to finish it up here real quickly, and, you know, we're really just scratching the surface here, too, by the way. we This is all just a small, very small collection of all the wines that we do make. Um, I think I mentioned to you earlier, we... We produce over 40 different bottles, SKUs, if you will, every year, and that's both brands combined. And most of those are done in, you know, one and 200 case quantities, so they're not a lot of big production wines. But right. when you add them all together, it turns out to be over 40 different wines each year. So it's 40 different wines, but you're a boutique winery, so you're keeping it down. So again, folks, you got to go to Pally Winery in the, I'm sorry, not Pally Winery, Pally Wine Company. Company. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, in the funk zone, which reminds me, talk to me real quick about the funk zone. Yeah. This is what, what we've been talking about this whole time. Right. But uh, where is the funk zone? What does it do? How long have you been there? Yeah, so we were early in that neighborhood um, back in 2012 is when we opened the, our, our taste room there in July of 2012. And, um, we saw what was about to happen there. We saw a lot of the development going on, and, and it just happened to be at the same time we were talking about opening our first tasting room, and we decided we wanted to look in Santa Barbara, and so we started looking around, and we saw this transition that was just starting. It was just, on, so we were a little early on the edge of that transitional period in the funk zone, and um, so we got in there, you know, got our foot in the door early, and um, saw the potential there, and you know, six years later, it's still developing and changing rapidly, and um, and we've only seen you know our our customer base just increase over those six years. We've done you know it's, it's been a great location for us just as far as exposing our our wines, not ourselves, but our wines to other people, or, you know, to, to people, that, especially tourists that come into the area. And thank you for that. <laughs> for not exposing myself. <laughs> That's what I do at the vineyard late at night. <laughs> That's okay. We'll cut that. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we, we, we like the, the concentration of, of the, you know, the, all the taste rooms in a small area in the funk zone was appealing to us because you get a mix of those um, out of town visitors, the tourists, and, um, and then you also have you know, proximity to, to, lo to the, you're in, this, in a city and so you have a lot of locals that live close by that use the taste room as a regular place to come buy wine or drink wine or bring their friends and so it's done very well we get that mix you know that mix of customers that help support the business and keep us keep the doors open year-round and so we're you know we're open there seven days a week um, it, people use it more like a wine bar than a tasting room but it you know it has whatever you want out of it and I'll tell you the truth I really like that place yeah I thank mean, you the fun much. zone is often fun and you're you're one of the few um, really uh, stand out wineries as far as I'm concerned. I, I like your guys' wine a lot and um, I think that uh, the Funk Zone is, is a great place and it's gonna get even bigger, especially right. after they see this show. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I don't know we'll be able to keep keep up with the business at that after this. That's right, that's right. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's- This is going worldwide, just right? so you know. Oh, on that World Wide Web or something I've been hearing about? Yeah, World Wide Web. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That new thing that yeah. people have been talking about. So yeah. I'm going to bring people there. Great. They can come do a, a wine tour with me, and I'm going to take them to Pally Wine Company over in the Funk Zone. What is this? What are we drinking again? The, so yeah, so we um, new design. This is we're redesigning some of the wines under the Tower 15 brand, um, but this is called Swell, and it's our Bordeaux blend. We've been producing it for many years now, and it's a blend of Cab Sauv, Merlot, Petit Bordeaux, and Cabernet Franc. Um, and again, a couple different vineyards go into this, this bottling, um, so it's a Central Coast wine because it's Paso Robles and San Inez Valley vineyards. Okay. Yeah, you can always tell with Petit for that. I know, I love A little bit of dryness uh -huh. mm, Yeah, we stuff. bottle usually six, four or six barrels a year of 100% Petit for Dough, and that's one of the many wines that we that we will bottle in smaller quantities. And, um, and when it's when Petit for Dough is good on its own, it, it can be really good. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's... A little rough by itself, so we don't bottle it every year. It's only in certain years when it actually. But you can is. always pick it out. It's like, yeah, it's I know you, you can taste it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's great yeah. stuff. No, I love it. You'll always find Petit Verdot in our Bordeaux blend because I love. Personally, I, I just love it as a as a blending grape, especially yeah. with Cap Sauv. Uh, but yeah, a little goes can go a long way. Okay, so again, folks, this is Aaron Walker, winemaker and part owner. Yeah. yeah. Of Pally Wine Company. And I just want to, uh, you know, thank you. We'll see you down at the Funk Zone. Yeah. And uh, 
Cheers. Thank you good for coming wine, by. Brother. Appreciate the, the support, too. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll make it. You guys drink it. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. We'll keep making more. <laughs> good stuff. Hey, we're here at Pally Wine Company Tasting Room in the Funk Zone. Haha, <laughs> once again, this is Adam Feller, the manager of Pally Wine Company. That's correct. Hello. So, we're here because I heard all about these taps. Like beer, but wine. Can you believe it? <laughs> so, tell me. So, like you said, we do wines on tap, just like a brewery has um, their beer on tap. But they also have beer in bottle and cans. Well, we have our wine in bottles, but we also have it on tap. So at this tasting room, we have eight different wines on tap. Uh, we have typically four things that are cold, usually a rosé, three different whites, and then four reds. Um, many of our wines that we have on tap are only available on tap. So, and they're only available for a limited time. So we'll do fun blends or fun single varietals. Um, so we do glass prices, so if you come in, you can get a glass. But another cool thing about it is just like the brewery, you can get a growler to go. This is what we call a wine growler. So that is exactly 750 milliliters, the same size as a bottle of wine. And it says Funk Zone on it. Yes, it does. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so I get to taste this stuff? Yes, sir. Let me give you some glasses and then let's get started. Oh, hey, whoa, 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 why do, no, 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 we don't, we don't do that. No? We, we have glasses for this. Oh, oh yeah. right, glasses, <laughs> right, wine tasty, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. No uh, worries, no okay. worries. You ready to do this? I am. All right, let's start off with our white blend number three. So this one, 80% Chardonnay from our state vineyard and 20% Sauvignon Blanc from Lake County. Mmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh yeah, that's good. So it's, tell me again, Chardonnay? Uh, yes, 80% uh, Chardonnay, and that's from our state vineyard in the Santa Rita Hills. 20% of the Sauvignon Blanc from Lake County, just okay. north of Napa. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Down the hatch, love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, what do we got next here? So let me give you our, what we call our PCH Rosé. So this is one of the ones that we do bottle. Most of them we don't uh, as far as tap wines, but this one we do bottle. So this is a Rosé of Pinot Noir, also known as the PCH Rosé. PCH. I love PCH. One of my favorite places to, to drive. Yeah. It's beautiful. And just down the road. Yeah, not far at all. Mm. So it's made in the Sagne method, so it's going to be fruit forward on the nose, but for this rosé, we do ferment it dry, so there's no residual sugar. Yeah, and it's not real fruity either. Okay. I don't catch a huge amount of fruit. And part of that is um, it's being almost, a rosé of Pinot, it'll be a little bit lighter. Yeah, it's almost flowery rather than yeah. you know, floral, rather than um, really fruit forward. Yeah. It got a... Wine dude is a sommelier as well, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're gonna um, try a red. <laughs> so we'll try a red next. So this is another one that we only have on tap. So this is a red blend number four. So this one is a 50-50 blend of Syrah and Grenache. Ooh, nice. This is all from the Santinez Valley. Oh, wow. It's got a cedar smell out of that one. Yes, definitely. There's definitely wow. some oak on there too. Yeah. Oh my god, there's a barbecue right there too. <laughs> mm. Okay, so let me get this straight. Mm -hmm. Taps. Yes. Wines on tap. Uh-huh. Come and fill this growler. Yes. Or by the glass. Yes, sir. You got it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, wine dude, you seem like a fun guy, and you might find this interesting. You might have seen this, the Pali Rita. So this is another one that we only do for a limited time. We did this one for Cinco de Mayo. 
So it's a Chardonnay based margarita. So I saved this one for last because we did use real juice like limes, oranges, so it's gonna have a little bit of sweetness to it. A palurita. Mmm. <laughs> Look at that. All right, there you are. <laughs> yeah, baby. Does it come with a shot of tequila? No, sir. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have a uh, hard alcohol license. Uh, I gotta ask. <laughs> Just though. one. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Oh, I see. Mmm. Right? Wow, that's good. I got so, myself a growler of that as well. I bet. Oh, you can get in the growler too? Yeah. Oh. Anything on tap, you can get in the growler. Oh, great, great. So this is a palirita. It's a margarita made with Chardonnay. Instead of tequila. Yeah. Instead of tequila. Yes. That's cool with me, especially yes. if you like wine. Right? Exactly, yeah. Um, and it is only done for Cinco de Mayo. Correct. So only once a year we do it. Oh, awesome. Wait a second. I gotta wait till next Cinco de Mayo to come back and get some of this stuff? <laughs> yes, sir. So you're all done. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> like a champ. I love it. Do we get. Do, do, okay, here, here, take it. All right. <laughs> okay, wine dude here in the funk zone with my buddy Adam. Love it, man. All right, man. Thanks for your time. Of course, yeah. And uh, people, again, remember. Come to the Funk Zone because this tasting room and these wines on tap are only here in the Funk Zone at Pally Wine Company. <laughs>